Good day, students. I'll be your biology teacher for today. And the topic for today's lesson is Microorganisms in Action. By the end of the lesson, you'll be able to recall what it means to culture microorganisms, name the scientist whose discovery led to a breakthrough in medical science and what it discovered, itemize the various instruments that can be used for culturing microorganisms in the laboratory, state ways of measuring growth in microorganisms, discuss the economic importance of microorganisms. Concept of culturing microorganisms. To culture microorganism is to collect sample of the microorganism from water, air, animals, plants, and various parts of human body and multiplying the microorganism by letting it reproduce in predetermined culture medium, that is, appropriate food material for scientific study. The principle is similar to growing a crop on a farmland, except in this case, it is microorganism growing in a petri dish or test tube. This is how scientists grow microorganisms to produce antibiotics. Alexander Fleming was a medical microbiologist. He made one of the greatest accidental discoveries ever, which led to a breakthrough in medical science. He discovered penicillin in the year 1928, the first form of antibiotics while growing cultures of bacteria on petri dishes in the hospital where he worked. Culture medium can be prepared as one, liquid or broth medium, nutrient broth, which can be prepared using 3 grams beef extract, 2 grams yeast extract, and 5 grams peptone. 2. Solid or agar medium. Nutrient agar. Agar is a gelatinous material obtained from the marine algae and usually added to nutrient broth, liquid medium, to obtain a solid consistency, which is a good device for the culture of bacteria on a solid surface. Preparation of culture using solid medium. All apparatus to be used must first be sterilized by autoclaving using pressure pot or boiling for 15 minutes in a saucepan half filled with water. Measure out your nutrient broth and keep it covered in a sterile flask. Boil the agar to dissolve it and add it to the nutrient broth. Leave to cool. Before the medium solidifies, which it does at about 45 degrees centigrade, pour it into the petri dishes or test tubes you are going to use. Petri dishes should be filled to about halfway and the lid replaced immediately. Test tubes should be kept at a slant while the medium is solidifying. This provides a larger surface area for bacterial colonies to grow on. The microorganism to be cultured is then introduced onto the agar medium. Inoculation. Cover immediately. Clearly label the petri dishes and test tubes and place in warm but dark compartment or incubator. Incubation. Petri dishes are best placed upside down to reduce the chances of contamination. Observe and take records for two to three days. Precautions to be taken during preparation of culture. Wash your hands with soap before and after the preparation of agar solution. All instruments should be sterilized before the beginning of culture preparation. Open petri dish only slightly and cover at once. Close petri dish firmly with adhesive tape. Sick person should not be permitted to take part in culturing experiments. Avoid talking, coughing, sneezing and touching of infected jelly. We'll be back after the short break.
You're welcome back, student. We'll continue from where we stopped. At the end of each experiment, flood the apparatus with a strong disinfectant and leave for at least five minutes before scrapping the used culture from a petri dish or test tube. Use a spatula and never your hands to do this. Wash and disinfect all apparatus before it is put away. After cleaning and storing the apparatus, wash your own hands thoroughly. Reasons for taking precautions. 1. To prevent contamination during the experiment. 2. To guard against infection of ourselves by disease-causing bacteria. Instruments required for the preparation of culture. Major instruments required are microscope, petri dishes, test tubes, test tube holder, inoculating loop, and lens, microscope slides, and slips. Growth of microorganisms. Microbial growth is defined as the increase in the number of cells which occurs by cell division. When microbes are provided with nutrients and required environmental factors such as temperature, pH, oxygen, water, osmotic pressure, they become metabolically active and grow. One cell becomes colony of millions of cells. Bacteria grow by the following process. Reproduction, which includes binary fission, budding, filamentation, stroke fragmentation, sporulation. Ways of measuring growth in microorganisms. Microbial growth is measured the following way. 1. Increase in cell mass. 2. Increase in cell number in relation to time. 1. Cell mass can be measured using the following methods. Dry weight method. Cell volume method. While 2. Cell number can be measured using total count stroke direct cell count, viable cell count stroke indirect method, economic importance of microorganisms. A. Beneficial effects of microorganisms. Some microorganisms, especially bacteria and fungi, are beneficial to human in three major ways. In nature, they are used for compost formation, nitrogen fixation, maintenance of soil fertility, digestion of cellulose, decomposition, silage making, sewage treatment. In medicine, they are used for manufacturing of drugs through vaccines, they are sources of vitamin B, they are sources of enzymes. In industries, they are used for baking, preparation of alcoholic drinks, making cheese stroke yogurt, retting of jute, curing of tobacco, tanning of hides and skins. B. Harmful effects of some microorganisms. They cause diseases, spoilage of food, deterioration of materials, death of plants and animals. Diseases caused by microorganisms. Animal diseases caused by viruses include poliomyelitis, infective hepatitis, measles, common cold, German measles, influenza, smallpox, chicken pox, yellow fever, rabies, AIDS, Newcastle diseases. Plant diseases caused by viruses include Rosette disease, cassava mosaic disease, maize trick, yam mosaic disease, cowpea mosaic disease, leaf call, bunchy top disease, 
swollen short desserts. We'll be back after the short break. You're welcome back students. We will continue from where we stopped. Animal diseases caused by bacteria include tuberculosis, leprosy, tetanus, typhoid, dysentery, cholera, pneumonia, anthrax, diphtheria, gonorrhea, syphilis, meningitis, yours, contagious abortion, whooping cough, etc. Plant diseases caused by bacteria include leaf blight of cassava, cassava wilt, banana wilt, tomato rot, onion rot, bacterial wilt, bacterial fire blight, yam rot, etc. Animal diseases caused by fungi include ringworm, aspergillosis, athletic foot, thrush, etc. Plant diseases caused by fungi include maize moth, rice blight, maize rust, leaf spot, cocoa black pod, coffee leaf rust, okra damping off, onion twister disease, rice moth, gumosis, citrus cap, panama disease, cigatoka disease, black spot disease, blast disease, anthracnose, and freckle disease. Animal diseases caused by protozoa include malaria, trypanosomiasis, cosidiosis, trichomoniasis, red water disease. Spread of disease causing microorganisms. Microorganisms are spread or transmitted through the following air, airborne pathogens, water. Waterborne pathogens, food, foodborne pathogens, animal, vectors or carriers, personal or direct skin contact. In summary, we learned what it means to culture microorganisms. We learned the precautions to be taken during the preparation of culture and two reasons why precautions are taken. We learned the instruments required for the preparation of culture. We learned how microorganisms grow and ways of measuring growth of microorganisms. We learned the economic importance of microorganisms. Students, answer the following questions. 1. What does it mean to culture microorganisms? 2. The accidental discovery of a particular medical microbiologist in the year 1928 led to breakthrough in medical science. Who was he and what did he discover? 3. Dash and dash are two media used to culture microorganisms. 4. Certain precautions are to be taken during the preparation of culture. State 5. 5. Microorganisms can be beneficial or harmful. State six ways they can be beneficial and four ways they can be harmful. Six, mention two diseases each in plants and animals caused by viruses, bacteria, and fungi. Assignment, in a table of five columns and five rows, write out five diseases, types of pathogen, mode of transmission, symptoms and effects, and prevention stroke control. For further studies, visit the following websites, www.micropia.nl, www.en.m.wikipedia.org, www.biologydiscussion.com. Bye-bye, students.